This video is in regards to the automated workflow for the Omnitrax units. We have it for the IVG unit, which is what you're looking at now, as well as the MCP-110. There's a few differences between the two different units. First of all, that I'm able to show you now is that the workflow button, as you notice, is on the main screen. For the 110s, you may have to click on the arrow to go to another screen to see that workflow button on the MCP-110. But for our demonstration, we'll be using the IVG unit. The dispatch will be sending you your load information no longer in the form of messages. Uh, they will be sending it in the format of different screenshots showing you all the information that you would normally have on those two uh, messages. What is different about workflow is that previously you've been having to go into your compose under messaging and choose the correct form, trying to figure out which form do I use for what stop. Now we'll present that information for you so you no longer have to decide or think about which one do I need to use. All you have to do is just follow the steps and validate that the information that is already on the form for you is correct and then you can send it when you have all your uh, documentation and you're loaded or you're unloaded. When dispatch sends you your load information, a screen will pop up and say that there's a new trip plan available. And also, if you have the volume turned up, it'll say a new trip plan is, is uh, available provided by dispatch. If I click on the workflow button, you'll notice now that I do have a trip plan and I do not have a pre-plan at the moment. That would be like your backhaul. There can only be one trip at a time. So in this particular load, I've got a pickup and I've got a delivery. The pickup is indicated also by a little go symbol. The consignee or my final delivery has a checkered flag. Any stops that are in between, be it a pickup or an additional drop off, is going to be indicated with the box pointing up for picks, pointing down for drop offs. If you have via points that uh, your dispatcher is sending you to a particular location, then that'll be with a blue flag. And those will disappear automatically as you get closer to that waypoint. Once you receive the information, you can click on info right off the bat, and it will give you the shipment info, basic info about the loadmaster uh, order number. You've got your pickup times. If there's a trailer on the order, when they send it, you'll see that present as well as a bill of lading, any commodities. Pieces weight, miles driven, the loaded miles. You can click on done. And then with the shipper selected in yellow, I can click on the details button. And it will take me to the stop specific information. And as I scroll down, I'll be able to see all the information that I have for that stop. If there's additional comments from dispatch, those will be there as well as any kind of pickup numbers or PO numbers or any kind of reference numbers, those will be there also. If you click on info from here, you would see if there was any kind of directions or loading instructions or unloading instructions for that particular stop. Back to my main details page, I can go to my next stop without having to go out of this screen and see what I have on my following stops. So any other stops after the shipper, I can just keep hitting the arrow to go that way, or I can go backwards also. Okay. Now, what you'll also do is you'll hit the accept button. That is the same thing as you uh, clicking on a load confirmation message. All you have to do is hit accept, and it will prompt you if you have enough hours to do it uh, safely and all that. You would click on OK, and it would send that in. Reject. If you click on the reject button, this trip will go away and you will have to call dispatch and have them resend it to you. I'm going to click on accept and it's asking me do I have enough hours to do this load uh, legally, safely, and on time. I'm going to say agree. Now those two buttons have disappeared. What's going to happen is you're going to drive into your location and we've geocoded them, put a little imaginary fence around each of these locations. And once you're inside that imaginary fence, it's going to prompt you once you stop, are you at the location, confirm or cancel. If you do not get prompted, 
with my first stop selected, I can click on details and then task. And then my arrive task is there. It should automatically pop up. If not, you will go to this set of screens and click on select. Now, if I'm late, it'll ask me for a reason. I can do the pull down, choose my reason, and then I could add additional comments. So like if you have, uh, you're putting weather or traffic whatever be the reason for your delay, then you can add information about, well, I'm on I-95 or 75 and there was a wreck or heavy traffic uh, or bad weather. Once you have finished that, you can click on Done. And then that arrival task is finished. And then with the IVGs, your load information or loaded at shipper form is going to pop up automatically. Now you can click to remove the uh, keyboard if you want and hit next page or you could do the arrow to the right and that would take you to the second page of the loaded call. Now again depending on how much information uh, dispatch has on the uh, order when they send it to you it'll be there you can enter information if you need to change it if you have to enter the seal number and then go to next page. Your trailer information will be uh, there if they've got everything uh, populated on the order and if you bobtail into the shipper then you would need to make sure that this inbound trailer field is blank and if you do a drop and hook of course you would say here's my inbound trailer yes I'm dropping and then my new trailer is something other than maybe the six nines once you're fully loaded at the shipper you have all your documentation then you can hide the keyboard and click on done Now those two tasks are done. At this point, you would just rot, drive off. The departed would happen automatically after you cross a departure fence. And then you may hear the unit chirp or even uh, talk and say that you're now leaving your location. For this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and manually select it and depart it since I am not moving. Okay, this particular load is complete. If I click on the little back arrow, then it's going to take me back to the main screen. And you'll notice now there's a green check by uh, within the first stop. That means that stop is complete. My next stop is going to be my constant need. Now my constant need could be the actual final constant need that we have on the order, or it could be a split drop. So even though you're going to a drop, you're not going to the final constant need, this is the constant need for you in your movement. So I'm going to click on my actual stop. I'm going to click on details. And since I'm not going to be prompted, I'm going to choose my task and manually arrive myself, as I showed you earlier. So I'm going to click on select and I'm going to say yes I'm here so I'm going to click on confirm. I'm late so I'm going to choose my reason and I could put additional comments then I'll click on done and then my arrival comes in now the unloaded destination which is my empty call is going to pop up. Now on the one tenths you have to manually select that form or manually bring the form up. It's not going to pop up automatically. So if I cancel this back to demonstrate how that would happen, you would come into your task. You notice that your arrive is already complete. You would just choose your unloaded destination. And this also pertains to the shipper. If you don't get prompted, you know, if you have the 110, you have to manually click on this. But it also, but it tells you what form you have to use. You don't have to think about that. Just choose it, hit select, and then this comes up. Again, you're going to go through the process of selecting this information, hitting next, and then once you have everything, you can click on done. Now, when the empty call does come in, it's going to uh, deliver the load, and then if you have another pre-assignment, it's going to send you that pre-assignment as a trip plan. So if I go back to the beginning here, to the main here, and if I had a pre-plan that I saw my pre-assignment, they could have zeemitted it to us. But in this case, the dispatcher did not. 
But now here's my trip plan. So when the unloaded destination comes in, what's going to happen is it delivers the load and then sends you your next stop or next trip. If you do not have a trip, then what's going to happen is you're going to get a free form message, as you may have seen before, stating that there was no pre-assignment at this time. And then, of course, the pop-up will come up and say, hey, new trip plan available. You can view or you can cancel. So we give it a few seconds and it'll uh, come in and also show us what's going on. Now you can also look at your history if you ever have to go back and see the different things that you did uh, here. There's nothing, you really can't do anything with it other than it just shows you the different uh, steps that you took on what you did. So if you're not sure about something, you could always come here and look at that. A new trip plan has been received. All right. Arrival detected TLD Logistics Services Incorporated. Okay, so it saw... It, gave us a new trip that came up and also it saw that we were here so it could uh, you could click confirm if you're ready to arrive if not all you have to do is click on cancel and then you can go back to it later as I showed you previously so again here now here's my three stops as I, I mentioned earlier you have a drop off with the arrow pointing down and then you have the final and so you could hit accept but it, like I said if you do hit reject then what's going to happen the current trip plan has been removed by dispatch. you blow it away and you're going to have to call dispatch to resend it this concludes our training on the automated workflow